my child has some language. We were doing ABA intensively before the pandemic and he was making great progress. We continued during the pandemic, but with reduced hours. We are losing our intensive program and transitioning to remote services model. I want to be teaching my child to use a device to communicate because I am desperate to know what he is thinking and what he wants. I'm getting a conflicting message about if I should be attempting to use an AAC device or double down on vocal speech. He is four and he is very focused on letters and science and space. What do you think there, Evelyn? I love it. <laughs> One of the first things that came to my mind was, yes, this pandemic has hit us in so many strange ways, but just because you're moving to remote does not mean you have, you're gonna lose intensity. You can, you can do 40 hours or more per week in any modality we've learned through this pandemic. Families that were getting that 40 hours a week it, intensive, this in-person, um, it's a little different because you might have to be, somebody might need to be near your child if they're getting it all remotely through telehealth, but you can still keep going. You know, your BCBA who's handling your program should be giving you lessons and should be training people who are, you know, local to you who can be there in person and can really provide that one-to-one -one with just some guidance. And, you know, some of the stuff can be perfectly fine through telehealth, but some of it, you know, some of the play activities, you know, it's a little hard to, play, to do interactive play, but all of that doesn't mean that you're losing your intensity. And then from there, whether an AAC device or not, if he is vocal and he's been doing really well and he has like all those beginning words, I would say you want to stay vocal. However, since he likes letters, and planets and science, that means he likes facts and things that stay the same, which means he could be a kid that's hyperlexic and you just don't know it. Mm -hmm. So lexic are kids who see words and they, they can, they're sight, it's sight reading, but they might not have the comprehension for it. So what happens with those kids is school is intensely easy, right? Especially the first two or three years because the first two or three years of school is pretty much just all memory. And it's all tied with letters and numbers and things that don't change. You know, R-E-D is always read no matter what you say. So our kids that have that kind of um, talent or, you know, that ability, that visual memory, you're going to use that to strengthen all the vocals he has. So you can teach him words and how to say it. And he has a concrete vision of what that word means. And then you, have, you still teach him the receptive understanding of the word. So he has comprehension. So work with your BCBA, test out some sight reading words from some of the books that you know, and you never know. The first time we saw this uh, skill, it was with a two-year-old and as a kid who finished here and mom was freaking out because she basically turned down Sesame Street um, to answer the phone. And her child actually who had never talked was sitting mm. on the screen reading all the words as they came up. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like calling us hysterical, you know, she had just started therapy not too long ago and she, she never even knew. But it's just that the words provide, the actual text provided him a prompt that he, he had this really great memory and he could read or decode everything. He didn't mean that, he, um, hyperlexia doesn't mean that you can, you know what it means. The comprehension may not be there. So you can walk down, these kids are always funny because you'll walk down the street and they'll be saying, no parking, seven to 9 p.m. <laughs> they, they don't know what it means, but they can decode the words. And so what you wanna make sure if you have a child with hyperlexia is that you actually give them that meaning also. And giving them that, that meaning through ABA is a very quick way of um, working at it. And what's gonna happen is, you will see because he loves letters so much that his language probably, his spoken language will probably increase more quickly because it has that textual support. And then um, school is not gonna be issue. Now that said, kids who like letters, numbers, and facts are typically very inflexible. So that is something I always tell families. It's a great skill to have. He's smart. School will be easy at the beginning, definitely. And school actually will probably be very interesting for him. 
for the long run because letters are always there, right? You're always reading and writing. But what you have to work on then is the flexibility because the reason they love those letters so much is those letters never change. You know, yeah. spell a word, it just does not change. <laughs> it's always the one way in that language. And then once they learn other languages, they start to figure out other things. But use that, let that letter reading ability and use that to support all the vocal language. And you're gonna see like, you'll, you'll see vocal language explode. That's usually what happens. Okay. Thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.